Hi there and welcome back. My name is Megan Swan. I am a mindset and wellness coach. I love the topic of sleep. It is one of the key areas that I focus on with all of my clients because it is so important and it really it stems from it's incorporated in every aspect of wellness, be it physical, spiritual, uh, mental, and emotional. So let's dive in. What are five things that you need to know to get the sleep you need to wake up energized and refreshed? Isn't that the dream that we all live? Uh, so here are the five things that I would recommend that you put attention on that maybe you're already aware of, um, but maybe you're not appreciating how much they could be negatively impacting the quality of your sleep every night. So number one is to renew your connection with the sun might not be as intuitive, but we are animals and we rise and fall with the sun, like everything else on the planet. And oftentimes we need to sort of reconnect with this reality. So whether or not you literally have exposure on your face and your eyes with real natural sunlight every morning dramatically affects your entire um, hormonal system and how you're getting to sleep at night or how easily you're getting to sleep at night. So this can just mean you can like high five the sun, if you will, when you're drinking your morning coffee or um, maybe your morning hot water and lemon, which I will get into right after this one. But uh, it is maybe an under considered thing. I and mean, if you can't do it first thing in the day, try and do it in the earlier hours of the day one so that, that the sun isn't um, the sun's rays are still like a healthy um, intensity and, you know, you're getting the benefits of uh vitamin D boost, ideally 15 minutes of natural sunlight a day. If you can't do that, you know, start with two minutes and see how it improves your sleep. Even with just two minutes of day, you're daily connecting with the sun. Um, it could be through a window, but if you can do um, it outside, particularly in the spring and summer, that is ideal. So the second thing is hydration we lose a lot of water at night. We're obviously not consuming any water. And even if you're not sweating, you are losing water throughout the night just with your body doing its normal processes. So it is so important that we start our day with a glass of water and not jump right to the coffee. So this was kind of a hard habit for me to break, but I've definitely broken it now. Just start your, uh, if you can add fresh lemon or lime, uh, really even more beneficial to kind of kickstart uh, the digestive system, but hydrating with ideally room temperature or um, slightly warm water, not hot, not cold, not ice water just gently wakes your system and like brings it back into this homeostasis from the night of sleep. Then wait 20 minutes before you're consuming your hot beverage of choice, be it coffee, tea, cacao, uh, matcha latte, whatever it is that you enjoy in the morning to um, sort of jumpstart your energy, if you will. Which brings me to number three, maybe consider reevaluate your relationship with whatever your stimulant substance of choice is not so much you need to cut it out entirely from your life, but maybe consider how many um, cups a day you are drinking and in what schedule so if you're going to drink coffee, for example, try and keep it to two cups a day and try and do that before 10am or noon at the very latest. Um, if you're having matcha or green tea, maybe you could extend that a little bit further into the day, like 2 p.m. or 4 p.m., but you don't want to be drinking anything that's any sort of stimulant after four o'clock in the afternoon, for sure, ideally two o'clock in the afternoon. Similarly, what are you consuming food-wise that might have these stimulants in it? Caffeine, sugar, um, what else? Yeah, high high sodium, anything that anything that can potentially interfere with you getting a good quality night's sleep. I would argue processed food or fast food, any of that um, falls into this category. 
anything that's difficult for your body to digest in terms of it taking a long time for it to be completely out of the system, or it takes a lot of energy and effort on the digestive system to digest it in your, um, in your stomach, then that's something you want to be having sort of in the midday hours and not in the last four hours before you go to bed. So if you're going to have a heavy meal, um, maybe it's processed food, or maybe it's like just a couple course meal, or maybe it's, you know, you have to do fast food that day, try and do that in the middle of the day and not right before bed, because anything that's um, making is taxing to your digestion is going to make it more difficult to get a good night's rest. Similarly, anything that is a stimulant that is keeping you awake, that is giving you energy um, and be wary. I mean, another one that's maybe not so um, common to think of some superfoods like maca root um, are stimulants. Um, ginseng is a more maybe common one that you know. We often um, are taking supplements, for example, that have green tea, ginseng or um, other stimulants in them. So just be wary, um, really mindful, read labels, understand what you're consuming in what hours of the day and really try and shift that to be sort of be let the last half of the day be free of those things that are stimulants and or taxing on the digestive system. Ooh, that one was a mouthful. So number four is the bedtime routine. Establishing a solid bedtime routine can honestly be life-changing. Increasingly in our highly digitalized world, it is increasingly difficult, that's what I was trying to say, to get a good night's sleep, partly because we are inundated with tech, with um, information, with scrolling, with screens, um, with just like consuming huge amounts of information and through a blue screen, um, even right before bed. So it can be so important, this digital buffer, installing it in your day. I would argue you even want to bookend um, your day with a, a, a buffer of 30 minutes uh, screen free when you first wake up and 30 minutes before bed at a minimum. But let's focus right now on the bedtime routine. So trying to establish some sort of ritual that is a clear signal to your body that it is okay, it is time to power down. It, you wanna communicate this to your nervous system, but also your mind and allowing yourself to really turn off for the day. Um, so things like maybe you give yourself a little uh, self hand massage with some cream, maybe you have some uh, essential oil, lavender is really relaxing and good for um, bedtime. I also love um, pine or um, chamomile. You can just rub a little bit on your hands and inhale it a few times. I also like to rub it on my feet um, and maybe you wear socks over that. So just like some little thing that you do, it could be just dimming the light, setting the tone, turning down um, the screens, the noise. Um, maybe you could use some soft um, music or uh, a guided meditation, something that signals to your body that, you know what, oh, it's the end of the day. This is for now I'm prioritizing rest and restore so that tomorrow I can hit the ground running and be at my optimal in terms of productivity, creativity, and stamina. And then lastly, um, very important and arguably probably the most unpopular <laughs> suggestion I will give is uh, considering your relationship with alcohol. Let's start with when you're consuming it and maybe how much, and then you can go from there as you reevaluate your personal relationship with that substance over time. But um, the half-life of alcohol in the bloodstream is four to six hours. So that means even 12 hours after you've had one drink, you still have some ethanol in your system. Um, some studies show even three to five days out, you still have ethanol in your urine. So being very wary of this reality that even if you're having a glass of wine with dinner, that is impacting your sleep. Now, if you're having a glass of wine with dinner and then two more after dinner and basically falling asleep um, right after or within an hour of your last drink, you are not getting the quality of sleep. You might feel like you need it to get to sleep, to turn your brain off, to power down, but it's much more sustainable habit to get into in the long run to have some little ritual to power yourself down, if you will, unplug 
and um, not rely on alcohol to turn your body off, if you will, because you might, you know, pass out and get a couple solid couple hours. You feel like there's solid couple hours, but ultimately you wake up in the middle of the in the night because your your system is working on detoxing that ethanol out of your system instead of the more higher level restorative work that our body naturally can do to heal itself like um, fighting chronic disease like um, looking for dead or abnormal cell growth and um, or healing you know growing muscles memory all those higher level healing rest and restore things that the body does when it is sleeping profoundly that you're really getting the um the REM sleep that you need so um those are the five just a quick leave review reconnect or renew your connection with the sun morning um sun salute you know saying hello to the sun every morning getting a little bit of sun on your face every day hydration, focus on water first, then your caffeinated or energetic beverage of choice. Number three, caffeine, other stimulants, things that are hard to digest, um, even consider your supplements, what is maybe keeping you up that you're not aware of. Uh, bedtime routine, some little beautiful ritual, maybe it's lighting a candle, maybe it's rubbing a crystal, maybe it's um, holding your partner's hand and asking how their day went. Um, maybe it's journaling, jotting down three things on a pad of paper every night that you're grateful for, um, the fa three favorite things that happened to you that day. And lastly, alcohol, try and have it. If you are needing uh, a drink or wanting a drink, you have that um, as close, you know, last at 6 p.m. and you're trying to um, minimize how much you're having right before bed. Also maybe consider, you know, how many days a week, um, that you would prefer to prioritize a solid night's rest instead of um, having that wine to um, help you power down and find something else to help you power down instead of that glass of wine. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I am here and always thrilled to talk all things sleep, wellness, and mindset. Uh, my name is Megan Swan and you can find me at meganswanwellness.com. Thank you so much for listening.